Welcome to BB's African News Magazine show on Jamba Radio, the show that focuses on all things positive coming from the Scottish African diaspora and we'll be reporting from here on all things Africa related before, during and after the current COVID-19 crisis. I'm Benny Briggs McKinley, BB, and as always, I will be your host. Guys, today on the show, we have a very special guest and that is a Scottish Asian diaspora leader, Mr. Raza Sadiq. Raza is the co-founder and chairperson of Active Life Club right here in Glasgow. Active Light Club is an ethnic minority focused youth organization empowering young people through sports. Raza also has a very diverse portfolio ranging from aeronautical automotive engineering, community development, equality and, uh, and discrimination, business management, young leaders development, life coaching and mentoring, career advice, information and guidance, skills and labor market advocacy and youth work. Ooh, that's quite a portfolio. Raza is also the leader of the Pakistani diaspora, a, a leader in the Pakistani diaspora, and has served on the National Independent Advisory Group for Police Scotland and many other bodies. He was honored to carry the Queen's Baton re uh, the Relay for the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow and has received many, many accolades for his work. He's received Diversity Hero, Inspiring City Award, People Make Glasgow, Service to the Third and Public Sector, Scottish Asian Awards, NHS Active Factor Award, Scottish BME Achievements Award, Scottish Muslims Achievements Award in Sports, Spirit of Scotland Award, um, British Ethnic Diversity Sports Award, Unsung Hero, Herald Society Unsung Hero, Inspiration in Sports, and many, many more. He truly believes in inspiring youth to become leaders and change makers. What a man. Well, today we're going to be talking to Raza about all the different hats he wears, his work in the third sector, and the similarities and differences between the Asian and African communities right here in Scotland, and what we can learn from each other. Fantastic. This should be good. As always, listeners, please remember you can add your voice to whatever we discuss by leaving your comments. You can go on the Facebook page, on the Jamba Radio page. If you're watching live right now, you can call us on the studio line 07542 002891. Once again, that's 07542 We're right here. We're live right now. Serena is here. Raza is online. He's right here with us. If you want to talk to him about anything we discuss or ask a question, do not hesitate to call if you're on the Facebook page you can leave a comment and we will read it out live on air and if you're on any other social media just go Jambo Radio in Scotland and you will find us on Instagram Twitter and anywhere you get your social media smart speakers say Alexa Siri Google play Jambo Radio and off you go so we're here and it's time for the man of the hour. Welcome to the show, Raza. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Should I call you BB? <laughs> BB. That was quite an introduction. That was a big one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's a, a big one. And I'm thinking about where it's coming. But I'm, I'm glad. And I'm glad I'm here and I'm speaking to yourself. And yes. we've been talking for a while. But finally, the day come. It's fantastic. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. Um, Raza, could you tell us? I know I introduced you already, but those were my words. Can you can you tell us a bit about yourself in your words? Yeah, uh, I'll keep it simple because <laughs> uh, today I'm, I'm obviously speaking to you as a co-founder and a chairperson of Active Life Club. And Active Life Club was uh, set up way back in 1999. Mm -hmm. Like-minded people, we felt like there is a need for uh, something, creating a hub for ethnic minorities communities mm -hmm. because there was hardly anything at that time. Okay. And we decided let's let's start something where we can empower our community, because there was kind of a lack of representation in in sports and uh, especially health. Mm -hmm. And I was working in a health project, and at the same time I was studying a community development course in university. Mm -hmm. So I decided let's do something practical. Okay. But I never had that kind of vision. We will be here after 22 yes. two years. Oh my God. So, which is a, a big surprise. But those 22 years, we have seen uh, some of the incredible journeys and uh, development and empowerment. And th that's where I am. But mm -hmm. as you mentioned in intro, mm -hmm. I, I do put my hand in everything, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yes. It, and it, you will understand. Because if you are from diaspora community mm -hmm. and uh, the challenges are endless and mm -hmm. sometimes you need to be leading from the front mm -hmm. to empower community and uh, build capacity. Mm -hmm. and this is how I've been trying to reach out to any avenue 
which yes. can help us to yes. prosper and move forward and develop our generations. Fantastic. So why young people? Why did you focus on the youth? Why do you focus a lot of your work on the youth? Yeah, absolutely. We started with for adults. Okay. For men. Because uh, I was working in a health project and there is a tendency for, I think, so majority of men, they, mm -hmm. they don't seek advice, they don't no. seek help. No. They end up in A&E when yeah. an extreme situation happens yeah. and they end up in hospital. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a major concern and issue within the ethnic minority communities because mm -hmm. they are working part and working long hours when the mm -hmm. services are short, they are, mm -hmm. they are off from work them to enjoy we started with uh, badminton okay. play and play okay. so many men throughout yeah. the week yeah and the shift came for a young people because I saw the difference in mm -hmm. a sense of and young people and adults there was a mismatch Okay. When okay. young people were around and adults were feeling a bit kind of a tight so, yes, or they're messing about you know yeah, so uh, they're not really letting us enjoy, and uh, they were kind of a, a bit forceful. On so this is how the whole stance shifted because we wanted our future generation to be inspired. Mm -hmm. okay. Obviously, I'm not excluding men or uh, those who are already established. Or, uh, I, I was looking into how we can make a difference. If mm -hmm. we don't really allow young people to be leading, yeah. then we are missing out. Right. So this is how the whole shift Still, we do offer services to adults. That's not yes. the case. Yes. The, the focus shifted. And since 2000, uh, we've been inundated. And our young people through various now generation being through. Yeah. And uh, one of the good examples, and now their children are coming. So that's mm -hmm. the kind of what we have created. <laughs> Another generation. So before we go deep into Act, uh, Active Life Club and what it, you know, what exactly it is, just tell us a bit about your your personal background. So were you, you weren't born in Scotland, but you've lived in Scotland yeah, for a very long time. Yes, uh, obviously uh, I'm from Pakistan, uh, mm -hmm. as you, you mentioned. Yeah. And I was trained aeronautical engineer. Wow. And which I was enjoying it. And then many diaspora community and I got married here in class. <laughs> I have to move and that change came through and I came in this country around 26, 27. Mm -hmm. That was a, a, my journey in Glasgow, a cold yeah. winter. <laughs> I, uh, shock to my system and the, the biggest shock was now you're in a new place. Mm -hmm. Despite I had a very good educational background, mm -hmm. but I was finding very difficult the to trip, yes. get into employment. Yes, yes. And uh, settling in the lifestyle, uh, you're uh, like a machine, mm -hmm. working, 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 and mm -hmm. even working in a low paid jobs, mm -hmm. no status, mm -hmm. but still you're working like, like a machine. Mm -hmm. And more like a, you're not seen as a human being, you're a <laughs> pair of hands. Mm -hmm. And that basically really affected big time, but mm -hmm. there was no choice for me. Mm -hmm. So I managed to do a variety of other jobs. So it's not really, uh, I worked in a, a video shop, I work in a cash and carry. So it's, it's just really, but I couldn't survive in those jobs. Some jobs lasted for three days. Of course. So that was a kind of a, a difficult journey through there, but then I never gave up. Yeah. And then I went through community education. Then I saw a few people around and I thought, if they can be successful, why not me? And this is a how, because I could not really go into aeronautical engineering, mm -hmm. despite I've tried, I've wrote hundreds and hundreds of letters, of but no and... response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no response. So for me to sacrifice that, the career, I still love it, you know. And then I tried to really move in, in a similar direction. Mm -hmm. And I went for an automotive engineering, but I didn't yeah. like the, the working environment. Right. And then slowly and gradually, Sex, something therapy. else yeah. because that happens a lot with people from diaspora they come with their qualifications professional qualifications and they find it so hard to break into you know the professional world here but i think that's changing there are quite a few like newly 
um, created organizations that help that you know that transition when you come through. Mm -hmm. Like on our side, on the African side, we have the Young uh, um, Black Professional Scotland, and that was set up mm -hmm. by a couple of guys who you know they found it really hard to break into the professional world here. So now what they do is they mentor people who mm -hmm. are coming in and trying to get them met, you know into the world. So hopefully they'll be, they'll be replicated across the other diaspora to help the new people who come in to keep their qualifications. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's different now, you know. But that's, oh, a very, that's a story that I've heard a lot of times happen to me as well. <laughs> okay, okay, so Active Life Club, okay? You've, to, you've told us a little, what exactly, so where, where are you guys based and what are the programs and, you know, what exactly is it? Active Life Club, we are based in Govan Hill, south mm -hmm. side of Glasgow, which okay. is the hub for a diversity. Yes. 56 <laughs> languages spoken. Wow. And we, we are small charity. Small mean we deliver back, but mm -hmm. small enough to manage. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when you manage as a volunteer, the focus, always focus remain young people on the board, on the committee. So mm -hmm. what we do offer, we use sports as a medium mm -hmm. to engage. Mm -hmm. That's our kind of, uh, I will call it a, uh, a way of engaging with young people with their love sport yeah. and that's the way we bring them in yeah. and then from there we offer a variety of other programs as you mentioned already we are offer coaching we offer placement we take mm -hmm. volunteers we've yeah. got young leaders other than sports and we do showcase our kind of activities we organize community events where mm -hmm. we bring communities together and similarly, we bring mainstream organization to really understand how to engage with diaspora communities because we might have a different cultures and mm -hmm. a, a different living approaches and all sorts. But one thing common, we all face racism. Mm -hmm. That's the, mm -hmm. that's yeah. the, the big crux. Yeah. Young people going through. I've, I've seen myself going through mm -hmm. and still I'm going through. So if I look into my portfolio, I've got maybe five degrees setting yeah. in my portfolio. Yeah. But I'm yeah. not reaching out to that potential. But yeah. I don't want to see young people going through the same and thing. And that's what we are trying to offer. Right. So do you think things have changed? So you started this in 1999. So that's over 20 years. Do you think, do you see a change? Do you think things are different now than they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Has progress been yeah. made? Yeah, one thing I, I, I found is we've been very busy throughout 22 year journey. Yeah. And that, that gives me one kind of a positive vibes. Mm -hmm. The young people are willing to engage. Okay. When we hear from other organizations, mainstream, yeah. or oh, communities now engaging, mm. uh, that, that's a big mismatch. For me, we are small. We don't have a huge budget, but whenever we open up something, it's indicated. Wow. It, people are struggling. Can we have one ethnic minority young person? We've got pro. I, that, that hurts me, basically. And that, the reason is still lack of understanding. But mm -hmm. our youth are more empowered. Mm -hmm. Our youth are not like the first second generation who's were accepting or internalizing racism and inequalities. Yes. But now. Thanks God, law of us, we are working hard to empower them. And, and that empowerment is bringing some results. Fantastic. Still, they are facing many challenges. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot really say with the confidence racism has gone. It's, it still exists in every But what mm -hmm. we are trying to do, we are trying to really equip them to stand, confront, challenge, and prosper. You don't really hide behind this mantra or because you are a from ethnic minority and a, you are a less able to achieve. So that's the kind of a message we are going through. But one example, how we achieve these kind of uh, approaches, we used to run a Speak Up Be Heard event, right. where we will bring public sector, bring all the powerful organizations, yes. and 10 year old standing in front of police or a, and a, a counselor and a raising questions. And me, that was an uncom uncomfortable moment for so many, and especially right. for service providers, because right. they were not used to hearing from ethnic minority young people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the kind of approach. Have we moved on to really a real success in a sense of the community is prosper? I still see there are bigger areas to improve. And that learning 
because for example this radio mm-hmm. this radio could be another source of empowerment to yeah uh, diaspora because the, when the community arrive i know the challenge the community faced every community is facing mm-hmm. this could be a medium to empower them but then again what we want we we want organizations we want policy makers to shift that narrative which still blame the victim or oh, ethnic mm-hmm. minorities are not engaging i think mm-hmm. so they are engaging very educated mm-hmm. they've got more degrees than anybody else it's just True. really now you need to translate into employment and mm-hmm. uh, employment based on what ca- the capable the progress and develop that's the one thing i love to see which is still not happening okay so do you think i mean there's um like you said there's progress has been made do you think we're in the middle of something so the minority communities in scotland are, are still quite young you know technically as opposed to those in england or those in the states you know we're still right in the middle of you know our growth to become mainstream itself so do you think we're in the middle of that and that's why the representation is not as strong as it could be yeah, for some community yes the, mm. the new communities are arriving and establishing but if if you look into the, those who arrived in 50s and 60s right they, they are into third generation so still they are facing that problem right. for example if i unpick the labor market mm-hmm. and the labor market is still very very kind of a divided in a sense of if you look into uh an arrangement role not many ethnic minorities are there okay. despite all the qualification and uh, yes uh, yes attainment they have yes uh, and uh, is this is something to do with the community is not capable which i will say no Mm-hmm. the community is very capable I, i see the systems are not equal and fair and it's a lip service is still going on but one thing i would like to really air through this <laughs> i think so what we need to really put a message to the community we we all bring very different skills see i'm sure you will able to speak how many languages six i, I can speak <laughs> so here you go am i <laughs> am i able to speak three four <laughs> so we we bring skill set which not many people will have mm-hmm. we bring educational background cultural knowledge understanding mm-hmm. working with the community to materialize and utilize to prosper mm-hmm. so it's only one thing i can is the barriers institutional kind of racism happens mm-hmm. if anybody says I was, I spoke in the past and it still exists mm-hmm. and it's not really going away but what we need to really we need to keep knocking the door all the time mm-hmm. so okay so do you think in your opinion that scottish government is doing enough because you talked about barriers and uh, we've got we've had discussions before this interview on the different the different policies that are in place for those barriers to be removed you know and there's a lack of you know there's policies against ageism racism ethnic you know discrimination gender discrimination all written into law all supposed to be implemented and we're meant to be seeing changes do you think there's enough being done by scottish government to tackle those I think so there has been a mantra and a narrative in Scotland Scotland mm-hmm. is a, a very welcoming country yeah. and we are uh, drumming down the racism but mm-hmm. uh, uh, racism is still there it's like anywhere else it's not really gone down mm-hmm. of the superficial and uh, tokenistic gestures right. they will never really change the whole narrative of the, the, how the people are kind of mm-hmm. institutions or policies yes. uh, you can sit behind these policies their nice shield or we are equal opportunity employer right, but right. the proof is proof is in the pudding put in. when you look into the breakdown of their workforce right not a single uh whether public sector especially public sector mm-hmm. cannot really come come front and say our workforce diversity uh proportional to the community we serve mm-hmm. not a single one so it means uh, despite these small initiatives but mm-hmm. the change has not been delivered. Right, I mean, I find it very interesting what you said a few minutes ago about third fourth generations um the Asian community has been here since the 50s, you know, and change is not as happening as quick as it could because we look at you from the African community, we look at the Asian community almost as a success story as in you've yeah. been here longer than we have and you've established things if you look at, you know, people in government, people in business, um there are lots of examples of Asian success, okay? In in England, yes, you can see a lot of examples of African success on a very high level 
it, it's obvious. Here in Scotland, not so much. We're still like really young in the community, but the Asian community has been here longer. And you can see, we see examples of, you know, really high profile people in high profile places who have Asian descent. So we look at you guys as, oh, you know, they're doing something we could, we could emulate that so don't you th do you think that's just a facade and just one or two people in high places are examples and the main community is not doing as well exactly exactly what you said is and i will add a wee flavor to it because right. see when they pick those kind of uh sometimes i call them gatekeepers yeah so when they, they go up they go up the ladder what they do mm -hmm. they, pull the they ladder lock up. the door <laughs> yeah. so, pull the ladder up so nobody else can come because I'm the one who's gatekeeping now because mm -hmm. I've got a, a, a promotional kind of a see yes. the, plus the culture see the culture and these institution is there rather than include mm -hmm. see inclusion is a non-existence mm -hmm. for for ethnic minorities law of narratives for example if I give example of the the black matter and mm -hmm. and uh, that campaign so many institutions knee jerk operation Jump, jumped they came out mm -hmm. you know, jumped the gun but overall what they've done they plaster on the plaster rather than mm -hmm. peeling that plaster that's why success is not coming through mm -hmm. and despite these tokenistic gestures we, we are not looking for favors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any diaspora or african dia we are not looking for favors we are looking for fairness we are very capable mm -hmm. we these communities they develop on higher education because so they can succeed they can achieve their dreams mm -hmm. but the systems they're still shattering their dreams you know it's, it's just it's a sad state of fear to see how many institutions they claim but they don't deliver mm -hmm. and uh, we are caught up in the, uh, yes we have we brought this initiative but when you look into the staff people progressing mm -hmm. it's a still probably in a deficit and a deficit model most of the institutions are going through at the moment but do you have hope is there hope well personally I, I think people like yourself your radio your community myself young people we're not going to give up mm -hmm. if, if the if the people thinking behind this policy and they can really silence the communities that's not going to happen because they saw it and yeah. they, they, they turned their eyes, you know, mm -hmm. of their country. The second, they, they spoke, but kind of, they couldn't achieve great, you know, mm -hmm. they were assertive, they were obviously going out and protesting. Mm -hmm. But see, this generation, this generation wants a change and they will get that change. That's my belief. They're strong. I'm, They're I'm not strong. young. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not young. But I behave like young sometimes because <laughs> I want these young people to really see yeah. why they should face. They're born and majority of them look tiny diaspora. Yeah. They're born and brought up here, and a generation mm -hmm. their parents are born and here, and that that there is no excuse when they, no point, they've been yeah. asked to where you come from. Mm -hmm. So can you see that narrative is not shifted, mm -hmm. and still mm -hmm. people are judging you on your color. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I hear this nonsense, oh, we don't see color. That's, that's rubbish. No, I see color, it's nice. Yeah, the, I like our, my color. color is identity, <laughs> you know? Yes, Why you course. don't see, we see it, but you it's don't fine. see it. <laughs> the younger generation, uh, honestly, because I can see that challenges, some pathways mm -hmm. need to be created. That's why mm -hmm. I'm here, you're here. There will be so many other activists around. And that journey is not going to really end to a and accept of uh, unfair treatment, mm -hmm. this will shift and will change. How long will it take? I cannot really say because the systems are very powerful mm -hmm. and a system can manipulate so many things which you feel like, yeah, we've been, but in reality, we are still not seen as equal. Well, we will be. I believe we will be. I, we, I have I have faith in the young people. I have faith in what we're all doing, the little bit we're doing. And I think if we all get in positions where we can affect change and everybody does their bit, then things will change. And we are still young, like you said, in this community. So in another 10, 15, 20 years, I do see if we do what we're supposed to do, I do see a possibility of, you know, 
a more equal society and more not just equal for accepting favors or accepting inclusion but actually just living yeah. and doing the things you're supposed to do as an equal in society you don't need to think twice and thrice and what the other person going to react to me you know mm -hmm. if you allow me, i will share you the recent campaign i'm involved of and course. why why we are trying to achieve probably you've been following uh racism in cricket yes yes which yes, yes. down south was a, a big kind of a backlash yep. and, and then Scotland and they denied the it they I mean, denied everything by the way <laughs> yeah. so exactly and uh, what happened in scotland actually was the same worst scenario hmm. and in scotland at one stage the obviously pakistani and subcontinent they, they, they love cricket and at one stage and cricketing kind of a world in scotland mm -hmm. around about 70 to 75 percent uh players registered Where? player Where were Asian. from this diaspora community mm -hmm. how many were playing in a uh, national teams or uh, upper structures very few they were facing all sorts of racism mm -hmm. and what we did we called running out racism called mm -hmm. roar ror mm -hmm. mm. and and the idea behind is why see this community they, they like to enjoy because they're working in a low paid job mm -hmm. they're working in a different sector and they they need to really chill come and enjoy and have a fun mm -hmm. and th some kind of a existing kind of structures they were not very welcoming so there was a racism and a personal structure institutional nobody's listening class citizen and and a younger generation they were really again a fair deal and a, yeah. how long their parents they suffered and their other kind of a siblings and now they are facing and so we decided we will take on so you might heard there is a, a review going on at the moment mm -hmm. the plan for sport through sport scotland yes. to do uh, evidence based inquiry in cricket scotland mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. what level of racism exists at institutional level and you do to really make this game equal for all mm -hmm. so keep an open on that one because okay. it's a six month kind of investigation going on okay. and believe me so many people are coming forward the with their stories, stories. No, we, we, we can't accept it. I mean, what I was going to ask, once again, I'm, bring, I'm tying it back to the Asian and African communities. So we have so many similarities because we're di diaspora and we also have differences as well. So I was in different um, sectors in, in African in the African community. You either you pull your people up when you come up or, like you said, you don't send the elevator down and you're like, no, it's just me successful and everybody else can stay down there. And you said it's replicated in the Asian community as well. But we do have pockets yeah. where when we arrive or when we have an opportunity, we bring our people to, you know, along who are oh. qualified to join us. I think we have those in common as well. We both do the, the two oh, communities absolutely. do the same. Look, yeah. uh, there is a similar structure within the Pakistani diaspora. Uh, I'll give yeah. you a good example of... I attended one of the Pakistani diaspora program to uh, help community in Pakistan. So was a, a lot of uh, senior leaders, they were in that program and we, mm -hmm. we started a variety of uh, initiatives uh, collectively mm -hmm. because we can see we don't want our young people to lose their heritage. Yes. Th that's very, very important. And, uh, yes. and uh, when you start assimilating and uh, you lose your heritage, and uh, mm -hmm. that's the last thing should happen to any community yep, yep. you should you should you should blend it you should blend you should be part of the major yeah. society um society yeah. at the same time yeah. keeping your heritage like it shouldn't be Absolutely. a one or yeah. so that that's the one thing I've come across the for example the the 20th anniversary in active life club and we invite uh gambian society mm -hmm. to because they were quite new mm -hmm. so we wanted to really share their culture so yeah. we had a massive event. The first minister was there. Even she danced on the floor with them. So it's, <laughs> it's just great. really looking into because we were trying to replicate to show people this society lives parallel with us, mm -hmm. but we don't understand their understand their culture, and uh, we claim all Africans are same. You know, all Pakistanis are same. So <laughs> it's, that's what the system do that. So, and uh, we just wanted to. Be your, no, there are uh, traditions and a different yes. cult, different approaches yes. to how you yes. reach out to. 
Yes. And that, that was a kind of a, a, a learning for these uh, institutions and mm. people to see. Yeah. Look, we, we always uh, sweep with the same brush, you know, as the mm. minority as a, a one kind of a Yeah, child. oh no. Uh, yeah. Even so within the country that, itself, everybody is different. Talk less of within the continents yeah. and the, you know, subcontinents. Um, and then rather, we have, yeah. No, no, we sorry. We have challenges. Yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. We go have ahead. Challenges. We have challenges as a community, like mm. African community, Pakistani, Indian, mm. all sorts, you know, mm. because sometimes we, we we do a lot of things which did, were not very productive either, mm -hmm. because mm. Yeah. Uh, I will say sometimes too much kind of a groupings being established for a, a eating out or a food and a calling it to be <laughs> the commu community represent. <laughs> and uh, w one thing I, I found probably I definitely know the lack of representation from young people and that level mm. and so many initiatives are happening once a year uh, seasonal stuff but young people are not really fully in if they're not in they are the custodian of our heritage yes I and think if, if, we, if we don't work with them throughout the year yeah. and just ask them oh yeah. today we have an african day or asian day come over it doesn't make sense to them but if throughout the year there are different mini events or different meetings and all of that the clubs they can be part of then when it's time yeah. for the big event cultural event then they will be engaged yeah. you know mm -hmm. yeah because uh, so. i've done like a, a food sharing kind of a events yeah. where the, the different food and the culture and uh, which which really helps and we have created a, a banner all different by united we have differences but you yeah. we're united for one yeah. cause and yeah. one cause is inclusion and affair yeah one thing i like to wow and Fun. and personally in from all this fight and uh, a power law blockage to my <laughs> because <laughs> nobody likes you to question the power mm, but I, I don't have any I don't have any intention to move away from my approach because mm -hmm. I'm turning 60 next year so oh, wow I'm you don't look it really... you don't look it <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm not gonna really uh, uh, buy into for a just a superficial offer to me mm. future generations I growth. understand so uh, I will be still stubborn I'll be challenging all the I see, and I'll be making sure there will be so many other Razas around me. Because I used to get this nonsense from people. Oh, it's Raza. That's, he's empty. That's he's just like Raza. Mm, mm. Yeah. So now it's, there are so many other young people. They will be questioning. They'll be Razas. I, I might not be questioning, but they will be questioning. Fantastic. So th Raza, we're going to do a quick... We're going to do a quick, 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 three questions really quick before we end, before we round up. So just get ready. You ready? I'm ready. First thing that comes to your mind. Okay. So what's the biggest highlight of all the work you've done so far? What's the biggest, what's been the biggest highlight of your career? Uh, the biggest highlight are so many, obviously. Seeing First one that comes progress. to your mind. <laughs> young people progressing, but when I Fantastic. carry the baton mm -hmm. and I saw the people around me in a community, yeah. That, that gave me i'm doing something right yes well done and then the biggest um, challenge of your career the challenge uh being honest educating people racism exists don't mm -hmm. blind yourself mm -hmm. and what where can we find you where can people if people want to reach you after listening to this join the club or you know donate to the charity or anything be involved how do they reach you Active Life Club, we've got a website, activelifeclub.org. Active okay. We've got our Facebook page, okay. uh, Facebook page, Active Life Club, and my own Facebook, Reza Sadiq. Okay. And, and we do have in Govern Hill. And so far, we, we are a small team of five. Uh, okay. And what we are trying to do, all of our staff and sessionals and volunteers are under the age of 26, majority of them. Wow, that's incredible. So th th we are... Uh, practicing what we are preaching, oh, preaching, making sure we are giving them a platform. So, if anyone who's interested to join mm -hmm. as a volunteer, as a as an expert coach, you want to join us on our board, please get in touch with me. You can uh, email me activelifeclub at hotmail dot com. Okay. You always very welcoming. We we don't really create those barriers. Sometimes you go through laborious processes. Yes. If you turn up yes. our session. Uh -huh. We will embrace you there and then. Then we, we will, will 
help you t- what to do. We will put your we'll put your details on our fi- on our social media handles as well, so people can reach you. Um, Raza, thank you. One qu- quick one. What is one thing about you that most people who know you may not know about you? Oh, a <laughs> good one. <laughs> I'm a. Uh, sometimes people see me. I'm very challenging. But uh-huh. I'm inside. I'm very soft and a very cute person. <laughs> I'm sure people spend time with you. They might, they might find that out already. <laughs> yeah, those who spend time, with you, they know where I'm coming from. Yeah. They understand. But the people, those who are in a denial, they find very difficult. <laughs> the Raza is Raza. <laughs> Raza, thank you so much for being on the show today. Don't be a stranger. Come back anytime. Um, if there's anything that happens and you want to share it, you want to come back, please, you're welcome anytime. And have a wonderful day. Thank you so, so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for your offer. I'm part of your family. And yes. I'm part of your family now. Absolutely. And, and the Jambo Radio family as well. Yeah. And you will hear from us. And we might look into engaging with young people through media and that's Lovely. something we'll able if you to want discuss. to come with some young people to the studio sometime and i okay, can get the, their own perspective that would be fantastic just hear absolutely. from that side that as well be that'll be we'll have a great yeah. time in the studio together oh absolutely and <laughs> I, I can tell you because a lot of young people are i've got no one very here. media savvy oh yeah they're very media interested and they've, they've been speaking to media and at even the age of 10 11. yes <laughs> and they're not shying away and i'm sure that will be a good development for them Yes. Thank you so much, Raza. Thank you. Talk to you you very, very soon. Bye. Bye.